Welcome, welcome everybody. Come in and join us. Uh, my name is Ann Thompson. I'm the Assistant Director of Public Services here at the Essex Library. And it is my absolute uh, delight and joy to be welcoming Dory Greenspan and Priscilla Martel to our uh, so-called stage, our Zoom stage today. Just a few housekeeping notes as we get started because we do have a big audience coming in today. Um, would you please keep your microphones off and your cameras mute, your, micro, your cameras off and your microphones muted. That, that'll work. Um, please feel free to type questions into the chat as they occur to you and we will get to those. Uh, I'll be shouting them out to Dory and Priscilla. I've launched a poll as you can see to, that is asking you how many people are sharing your screen with you today. Uh, and if you would let me know that, we're going to mute. If everybody would mute, that would be perfect. Um, uh, uh, the State Library asks us to share with them our attendance statistics, and we also have co-hosts today, and I want to be able to share uh, attendance statistics with them. And speaking of co-hosts, I'd like to thank the Hotchkiss Library of Sharon and the Iverton, Phoebe Griffin, Noyes, Acton, Westbrook, Deep River, and Chester Libraries for partnering with us today. Uh, and it looks like pretty much everybody has answered our poll, and I'm going to take that away and close that out and keep admitting people get you all into the room and just a brief introduction dory greenspan's reassuring voice has empowered millions of bakers probably multiple 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 millions of bakers and hopefully about a hundred more today uh, and made her an international icon she is a columnist for the new york times magazine she's won five james beard awards was inducted into the who's who of food and beverage in america and awarded an order of agricultural merit from the french government for her outstanding writing on the foods of that country. She divides her time, and thank goodness she does, from between New York City, Westbrook, Connecticut, next door to Essex, and Paris, which everybody is now green with envy. Mm -hmm. Dory's conversation today is with her good friend, Priscilla Martel, food guru and former chef of famed restaurant du village in Chester, Connecticut, which I'm sure if everybody agrees with me, we all miss dearly. Mm -hmm. So with that, Priscilla and Dory, please, delight us with your wisdom. No one has ever said, take it away and delight us. Yes, really, <laughs> <laughs> that's a tall order. But I have to say, it's a wonderful pleasure to be asked to participate oh, and hang out with my buddy Dory in her beautiful, sunny, bright kitchen with everything you want, but it's welcoming and warm. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You for being and a home of delicious meals. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming. And there are so many of you, thank you. Um, nice. yeah, it really is, yeah. it's a great excuse. And, and thanks to our friend, Laura Grimmer, who put us all together for this. Um, yeah, let me tell you, uh, giving me an excuse to bake from someone else's book is really a gift. And I have had <laughs> nothing but pleasure with baking with Dory because it's not every day that I go and dabble in someone else's baking book. And, and, it's, and, and I don't. Um, yeah, and it's been a joy because your interest in technique and making it easy or approachable is really apparent. So I think, I think of myself as an evangelist for home bakers. It's like I want everybody in the kitchen baking. It's, well, I mean, you're a baker. You know the pleasure of baking and of making it. So it, 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 and I made these things here. <laughs> um, I'm just going to reach over. I'm just going to see. Oh, I hope I don't lose you. I just want to see if I can see if we can. Of course, if I can see, it would be better. <laughs> nope. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. That didn't work. <laughs> it's that. Baking, the whole process of baking, I think, is a joy. And then you get to share it. Mm -hmm. And so so I made the chocolate. What is the cho name? Caramel I cookies. So I, gave, I, I named almost all of the recipes. I had some help. Okay. Caramel friends. crunch chocolate chocolate cookies. And I took something that I knew was totally approachable 
Plus Dory makes the cookie dough in a, a muffin tin. So you get this neat round shape, but you get this natural caramel exterior. And, and it, it's, it really works. Well, Lucy, says, you can smell it. I'm gonna taste it. <laughs> but, um, it but when you say natural caramel, so yeah, you put the cookie and the dough in the muffin tin. And so the edges in the bottom the, sh the sugar and the butter brown and caramelized, and we get you know nutty butter and caramel sugar because it's, of it, being it in it a delivers container. exactly exactly. And also, I mean, you're a pro, but it, that was just <laughs> a little crumb that needed <laughs> needed mm, so good. Um, when you bake in a muffin tin, they're all the same. Yes. They're all beautiful. If you've never baked before, you get to stack them and. Look like look like a pro, and that's something that is everything comes out. And this is this one is the one we're going to try it later. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. haven't had it in a while. Pistachio, apricot, tea, yogurt, olive oil cake. I didn't put all those names in. No, 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 no. Oh, thank I'm, goodness. I'm, okay. I'm not, I'm, oh, you're. Well, I'm actually. I think I did. <laughs> it's the apricot and you're right. The apricot and pistachio olive, olive oil cake. cake. I, I taste it, you split, you make this wonderful cake with a batter that has uh, sugar and eggs and ground up tea and orange zest and yogurt and olive oil. And you split this cake after it's baked and put jam in between. It's so aromatic. Well, so, and once again, I think, I mean, you did such a, <laughs> Priscilla's cake, you did such a beautiful job baking it, but it's a simple cake that ends up looking elegant and ready for a party. Just because you swipe some jam over the top and yes. sprinkled on some nuts. So I'm not, when I first started baking, so I taught myself to bake because, because I didn't grow up with bakers or cooks and got married when I was 19 and thought, I want to learn how to cook. I want to have people sit around the table, you know, and, 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 and be, be home in, in our home. And so I taught myself to cook from cookbooks and to bake from cookbooks. And back then I thought if it wasn't hard, if it wasn't complicated, if it wasn't elaborate, if it didn't have a million elements, it wasn't worth it. Like, I was, you know, I was teaching myself and I wanted to learn all of the techniques. And I guess I was a little bit of a show off, I don't know. But as the years went on, Everything I did got simpler and simpler and simpler. I was less interested in fussiness and complicatedness. Um, but you have been inspired by your travels to bring in flavors that we wouldn't think of. And that's that's really apparent in a terrific way. Example here, the, the, the uh, butter cake with miso maple. Well, I mean, that's wild. But it's, it's that... I'm more interested these days and have been for years in flavor, in trying to get as much flavor out of really simple ingredients and texture. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I feel like if I can get flavor, if I can get texture, then a swipe of jam, unless it's a birthday, and then I think you need frosting and layers mm -hmm. and you know, a place a place to put a bunch of candles. Um, that's, a, that's a whole other category of that I have food. to say, in, in this book, Baking with Dora, you have a section on two standout pastry or categories being uh, cream puff dough and meringues. And when I saw the meringue section, my heart soared because I'm a meringue fan. So what happened? So this is my 14th book and, and my 30th year as a, oh as a, there, yeah, as a cookbook author. Um, my first book came out in Sweet Times, came out in March of 1991. Yeah. So it really is. This is it's a, a really 30 years old mark. And um, nothing, everything has changed about the way I work, and many things haven't. And my being slightly disorganized and like working to the very last <laughs> minute. You know, it's true. <laughs> you know, it's true. So I kind of don't know if I baked a book until almost the end. So when my editor writes and says, deadline, deadline's coming up, 
that's when I think, what have I got? And so with this book, I did what I've done for the last maybe five books. I put the names of all the recipes on little pieces of paper. And then I kind of dealt them out like <laughs> by <laughs> sections. Yeah, oh, like, oh, this will go into breakfast. Oh, it could go into cakes. No, I'll leave it in breakfast. This is definitely a tart. This is, and I just made, I made the chapters that way. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at them, I realized that I had played favorites, that I had in the breakfast chapter, and this is the first time I've had a breakfast chapter in 15 years, and it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. um, I had made brioche, and then having made brioche and made a loaf, I made it into a bakta, and then I made it into a savory bakta, and then I made it into sticky buns. And so the breakfast chapter was a little heavy on brioche. There were all those cream puff dough recipes and all the meringue recipes and so many chocolate chip recipes that I ended up making sections in most of the chapters that I ended up calling sweethearts oh, because nice. those were those were the ones that I had kind of gone deep mm -hmm. on because I love them. And so meringue got its own little chapter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it's so, and it's so easy to make. I grew up with grandmothers, both of them that made meringues. But I don't know. <laughs> The, do people make meringues? I'm not sure. They should. Well, you'll make it easy. For you, them. you can you can tell us if you make meringues. You can pipe up in the in, in the, the chat, chat and we'll catch up with it later. Do you know, I remember um, when I was working on my book Power Sweets, I went to Jacques Rouleau, the pastry shop in Saint Germain des Prés, and I had asked him. I said, I'd love to have a recipe of yours in the book. And it's beautiful display of tarts and and cakes and 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 small little pastries. And I said, you know, just give me the recipe that you would like, you know, my readers to have. And he said, no, I mm -hmm. And he made he asked me to come to the pastry shop at the end of the baking day. And I thought, well, he probably was doing that because he didn't want me to disrupt production. Okay. But in fact, that's when he made meringue. Okay. And he made the meringue, not his pastry cooks. And he made the meringue just as, as we would make it and put it in the oven and let it stay there all night. So as and the oven declining. was cooling down mm -hmm. in the declining yeah. heat, well, that was how he made meringue. I, I just think you, if you talk about texture and flavor, it really delivers. It has texture. It's totally crunchy. And then you can have the cream with it or ice cream, whatever. Well, but it also, when it bakes, it often, it cracks in that crack. The sugar inside gets a little caramelized. Mm -hmm. So it has more than, it's not a mono flavor. It's mm -hmm. not just sweet when you make it that is well it's beautiful i don't think it's i don't think it's supposed to i don't think it's supposed to crack but i like when it does yeah, I rest it. but you know we were talking the other day and you have a terrific story about how you ended up here in our neighborhood and i, I don't think we want to go too much further without you telling me it's been about 40 years then it, it is yeah, 40, 40 years, years. It, next year will be 40 years that we're in westbrook and um my husband and i were with family and a cousin said, you know, you never visit us. We're not that far away. We were living in Manhattan. He said, two hours, you can be at our house. And we drove up and spent the afternoon with him. And it was, I think it could have been November, like now. And he had a sun porch and the sun was shining. And I thought, oh, it's so peaceful here. It's so calm. I said, Maybe this is where we should live. And he said, the house across the street's abandoned. It's and that was this house. And we ended up, we, had, we hadn't driven up thinking we would buy a house. We hadn't, and, but it, it just happened like that. And it wasn't until we moved in and started, I had no idea where we were, and started mm -hmm. driving around and went to Essex which is just, I think, six miles away, that I realized that Michael, my husband and I, 
had spent a weekend at the Griswold Inn a few years before. And I had said the same thing that I must have had like this, this, I've got to get out of here for a moment. But uh, we were there and I said, oh, this is so nice. If only one day we could live near here. And I just, I had, I had no idea. I think somebody said I have a lucky real estate gene, but I just, um, the same way that I'm not so good at planning everything in my books, a lot of a lot of good things have happened to us by serendipity. So and we're not, happy you're here. Being here, I love being here. I love being. And here. the other thing you said, and it, um, you didn't exactly say it, so I'm going to say it in a more quotable way. She has big why and stop and shop recipes. Yeah. So if if Paris <laughs> or Lisbon or Copenhagen can be a, an inspiration. You've actually found inspiration right in our neighborhood. I, you know, it's funny because my last book, Everyday Glory, which is a, a general cookbook, um, I, I, I called it my Big Wise Stop and Shop cookbook because I did it here for the most part and was shopping locally. Went to Guilford so I could go to Bishops and shop, you know, Starfish, but mostly I was shopping in supermarkets. And for this book, for Baking with Dory, for Baking with Dory, I was able to travel. And so the cover cake comes from, it's the Lisbon chocolate cake. And as you said, there's a cake, your cookies from Copenhagen. And dying, that's very high on my list. It's a, a seed and rye cookie. I'll get the name yeah. for that one. That I almost, you can see I have my, my copy. <laughs> I love lots that. of little posting things. Um, um, and so I was traveling and I was meeting other bakers and I was going to pastry shops and being inspired by what I was seeing and thinking, oh, I'm going to go home and make this. And then COVID. And so half of the book, I worked on, yeah. So half of the time that I was working was out and about time. And the rest of the time was big, wise stop and shop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, except for the recipes that have the names of foreign places, um, I don't think we could say one is better than the other because it was inspired by being someplace else. So you have a gift to be able to eat something and then translate that. I don't know if that interests the, the public, but it does me. How do you taste the Lisbon cake or these Copenhagen rye cookies with chocolate spice and seeds. And how do you, how does that process work? I suppose I think, if you get the chef, you get some. Yeah, input. but I think you have this too. It's, my husband says he can't, he can't do any of this. Um, I'll say, I'll, I'll taste something and think, oh, that would be good with ginger. And he'll mm. say, how do you know? And it's mm -hmm. just a yeah. library. It, it's it's a taste memory. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a library up there of flavors, and mm -hmm. and so I, I'm not alone in this by any means. Um, and as I said, I know you can do it as well. But it's where you can find where you can imagine, yeah, yes, what yes. it will taste like. And it's funny because I think that when you're cooking, you must do that, right? Because I think in cooking, you're always making like these mid-course. Yes, you, know, you have a destination in mind and you, you have to tweak it to get to where to you, you right. want to go. So sure. it's, you know, seasoning or, oh, this needs to cook down a little. I'm looking at the, the stew that's <laughs> burbling to my left. Mm -hmm. um, it needs to cook down a little mm -hmm. bit more. And so with baking, the opportunities for making changes in the middle of something. Yeah, they don't exist. Right? They don't, right. Because you get the flavoring right, but I know that you test many, many times right. to get the uh, the amplitude of whatever you're trying yeah, to Yeah, of course. In. Yeah, but 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 it's, you, you know, I start with an idea. I think, well, this will be a good combination. And then sometimes it is. And sometimes even as I'm working, so I work um, in pencil and paper. Um, so I write, okay, you know, one cup of flour, that doesn't represent one and a half or and I keep so sometimes even as I'm working like that I'll make a little change I'll look at it or I'll smell it or if it's a batter I'll taste it and think mm, that really could just not mm. 
courageous. Yeah, and sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but you're great about retesting, retesting, because that's okay. what yeah, that's what we all need using anyone's cookbook. Uh, if it's from unfamiliar in any way, uh, you need to know that the person really has has been so disciplined to give us a great recipe. Which doesn't mean that <laughs> no, it's important. I, <laughs> right. I, I, I weigh always, the flag for you. Yeah. yeah, it's really, um, really important. It, no, it really is important, but it's also why I think. That, you know, some people say, oh, baking, it's so hard, it's so precise, it's so scientific. It's so, and I think it's easier than cooking because if you have a good recipe, you just follow it. Mm. I, well, you have the thumbprint cookies that you ended up, that was sort of a mistake you said in your thumbprint cookies with the, uh, the dimple for chocolate and things. Right. I'm, I'm supposed to know the titles better than No, that. why yeah. are you supposed to? I can't remember. If well, but the I, I'm partial but... to the thumbprints. I'm kind of partial to most sweet goods. <clears throat> I try not to make them, otherwise I eat them. But the thumbprint cookies, you put the, the ruby chocolate in. Oh, so but the ruby chocolate was new to me. Do you know that ruby chocolate out there? It's pink. You Actually, you I gave, gave me the that's first. Why, right, that's, that's, right. that's when I saw that. I thought, oh, what a great idea she came up with. Well, I'll find, find it. You talk. I think I'll find it. Here it is. Here's a pretty fabulous photo of it. So that's a spicy, crunchy chocolate thumbprint. Um, and in the dent, you've got either jam or the melted white so, pink chocolate. But the pink chocolate is like a gift to lazy bakers. Um, and this is this this is really a good cookie for the holidays if you're making cookie boxes. Um, because the chocolate, all you have to do is melt it and put it in the center, and it's automatically beautiful and sets. I love that picture. Yeah, me too. It's so pretty. Because you don't see, I hope you can see that, you really don't see natural pink things like that in a chocolate. And it's just the way they uh, harvest the cocoa and ferment it. They don't let it um, fully ferment and darken. Really cool. And it has a slightly acidic mm -hmm. flavor, which mm -hmm. is really also nice. So it's not, it's sweet, of course, but not, not really sweet. But stuff like that is fun when you find a new ingredient or when you can showcase an ingredient that you, you know, but doesn't often get a spotlight. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, and it becomes new too. It is new, but it becomes new again. And then, and then these were super. You, I remember. Oh, that I was so we excited. Were testing. These was... are a uh, cream puff batter that's piped and it makes a like a stick, like a grissini or a bread stick, only sweet. Oh, well, but and it could, but it could be you could savory too. It could be savory. Were you here when I first you, came? Yes, you brought yeah. it to the house. We ate yeah. outside. They, so I cool. think I brought the savory one. Yes, yeah. yeah. Big, tubes and they look so great standing up in a water glass very sensational See, presentation but that's that's what that's the fun of food and truly the fun of, of pastry because this is the same I mean, why am i taking you about that doesn't matter but, um, <laughs> so these are a little bit like pocky sticks the japanese snack sticks but it's the same dough that makes little puffs it's the same dough that makes profiterol but when you change the shape, so you make a long, thin stick like that, everything about it changes because the texture changes. You're getting more outside than, um, than the innards. Um, and so you have a completely different sensation of it. What do you say to folks, And because we can talk between ourselves from a baker's perspective, but what do you say to people who are maybe a little anxious about baking or ready to bring it to the next level? Do you have a few pointers, recipes they might want to make their own? It's less recipes than it is just doing it, just getting in the kitchen and baking. Like any craft, and baking is a craft, you get better as you do practice it. it. But it's also, I think, and once again, this is true for, I think, any craft. You need to pay attention, mm -hmm. right? Watch as things change. Make notes, you know, have a, a, a pencil and, and, and write in your books. Make notes as you go along. Um, 
people say what I'm often asking, what recipe should I start with? And I always tell people, start with whatever it is you really want to make. That's I mean, what point. we sure. Right? Yeah. I mean, I just I made the brownies. They're called Park Avenue brownies because they're thin, like the wealthy folks on Park <laughs> Avenue, but they're not that thin, but they do taste incredibly rich. <laughs> they call them billionaire brownies. So Charlie and I managed to polish off most of those. <laughs> good, good. So good. I, I just started with something totally I could make at night easy peasy and then uh, these cookies sounded appealing and then this this is fantastic oh so this is this, I this. made this and it's, it was on the cooling rack I didn't move it yet so it's the cocoa cranberry linzer tart um it's a chocolate version of a oh of a linzer cookie um and I roll my dough out as soon as it's made. So if, if, you, if you have fear of pie crust, I did for years, um, you're just rolling this out. It's like play dough. You roll it out between the parchment and you don't have to worry about overworking it. Or, and it goes into the refrigerator. And then it's cranberry, raspberry jam inside and two layers. And it bakes up. It becomes pretty all on its own. You don't have to do anything with it and I'm going to pipe well I'll, I'll share half of it with you oh, tonight but the other thing. half is going in the freezer and I'm bringing it to a friend um I'm going to make another one for Thanksgiving that's great yeah, yeah I was happy to see the pumpkin pie too I might I might give that a whirl for Thanksgiving so it's I, I'm going to do a couple of things for Thanksgiving one of the things that I want to do is um not at all traditional. I, mean, I want to make, there's a lemon tart in the book called the French Riviera Lemon Tart. And the recipe was given to me by a friend of mine who has a cooking studio in Nice. We actually mm -hmm. took a class with her. And the dough has um, butter and olive oil in it. And you just press it in so you don't even have to roll it. And you don't, it, it's like, it's, it's like, a, I say it's like a magic trick and it is because you make the dough and it goes directly in the oven. It doesn't have to cool. Mm -hmm. So like Perfect. 10 minutes in the oven and then you make the filling, stove top, pour it in, chill it, and it's ready for dessert. And it's really puckery. It's like a kind <laughs> of um, lemon flavor. And I think that that would be so nice after a holiday meal, um, Thanksgiving or Christmas or any time when you have a really, when you're having a feast and to have something that is sharp after it. To, just to clean the palate, that's a great idea. Yeah, but I mean, I'm still going to make a pumpkin pie. Of course, I'm mm -hmm. going to make this, and then and oh. then you go up to Paris, right? You go up to Paris in a half a minute. Wait, wait, one sec. Sure. Right. Um, <laughs> and there we go. Okay. So I thought I oh I turned it off, but uh -huh. I guess it was the grand baby. It was, it was grand the grand baby, baby. calling. <laughs> Um, but but so Thanksgiving, America, but then you go off to France. So right? you go to Christmas, Paris. Christmas and New Year's in Paris. So that's like the old schedule, right? That's your that's, that's your right. classic time. Yeah. So for over twenty years, that's where we spent the holidays, and of course not not last year. Right. So Christmas with friends, and then New Year's at our house. It would be special. Yes. It would be, it'll be good to be back. And, and do you do you make a, a a formal Réveillon or a more fancy meal? So I make, I have some things that are always the same. And then you can never, I'm the person who goes to the supermarket with a shopping list and comes back with <laughs> nothing that was on it, but, you know, bags full of other stuff. So I'm kind of like that in menu planning. Like um, I'll make a menu and then I'll go to the market and think, oh, oh, that looks so good. That's that's what I want. So, but we always have gougere to start. So when people come in, there's champagne and gougere, and I have a new gougere recipe in the uh, new book. And that's uh, shoe pastry dough with cheese. Right, cream puff, right. 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 cream puff pastry, but savory. And this version has gouda and cumin. Oh, I have those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that, that, as soon as you come in, because you can make the dough, and I use a cookie scoop to shape it because I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I can use a pastry bag, but it seems so fussy. So 
just scoop out, goes in the freezer, and then they get baked directly from the freezer. So it means that when you come in, the gougere in the oven, and you have that that lovely aroma mm -hmm. of warm cheese through the house. So, so we always start with um, champagne and, and gougere, and we always have oysters oh. to start. Mm -hmm. And then it's up for grabs. And then we usually go to the Pont des Arts, which is the wooden bridge between the Institute of France and the Louvre. And you can see the Eiffel Tower from the bridge. And so at midnight, we go with champagne oh. and we toast the new year. And then we come back and have Bouche Noël, um, always have macaron. And this year, I never, I never bake. Um, a dessert for New Year's. You, you buy the beautiful, I buy the well, beautiful, you, right. whoever, which guy right. is doing the coolest one. But this year, this year there's a cookie that I want to make. So I'll be baking. In addition to the vision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fabulous. Well, I'm sure you'll be so happy to be back with your friend family in Paris. Yes. Now, yes. I happen to know we're getting close to Q&A, but I know that the community in Essex, particularly in the shoreline, might be interested one or two Paris hot tips, if you have one at the tip of your tongue. Um, I know I drool over Bistro Paul Bear <laughs> oh, I on my it. Instagram. I just wish I could go out and eat one of those meals without so that. That's, <laughs> that's a favorite place um, for us. It's um, the Bistro Paul Bear is more traditional than most, I mean, like, like everywhere. Food is changing and it's modern and it's exciting in Paris now. But I love, I love the classic bistro fair and I love, I love the room, the, the red leather banquettes that are just a little worn mm -hmm. and the tiles. It's, it's, I love that place. Um, there are two really interesting um, pastry shops. So Cédric Grolet, who was the pastry chef at the Maurice, opened his own shop near the opera. And um, he's doing every, everything he does has a look that's, that's new. And, and you can see it on Instagram. <laughs> and the Ritz Hotel, um, the pastry chef there opened pastry shop. I saw it this summer for the first time. And his specialty, what, what he's kind of becoming known for, um, are Madeleines. Oh, okay. Mm. But he makes them, he makes giant ones and he makes little ones and they're filled. So there's some with caramel and some with raspberry and some with chocolate. So he pokes and, a hole in the shelf side mm -hmm. so that the bump is full. Huh. And the bump is full and they're the color of what they are, so they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, it's, my favorite thing to do in Paris is to get lost. Mm -hmm. To just, sometimes we, Michael and I will take a bus and get off, so any place, and just walk around and see, and see what's, see. Work, what's happening. Learn yeah. so much of it. Yeah, and going mm -hmm. to the markets and, and just, even, even when we didn't, we didn't have a place where we could buy something at the market and cook it. Going to the market was always interesting to see what was available, what people were, were mm -hmm. buying, to just you know, chat with the vendors a little bit. And you can always you can always eat cheese, no matter what you say. Are, about cheese. Right? Yeah, cheese and bread. Really nice. mm -hmm. Well, I think it's time to turn to you, Anne, and the and the the bevies of questions. I hope for Dory and you and you and me. Oh, yes, we definitely have some questions uh, for you. Um, so one of the first ones is, uh, I have to ask, do you watch the Great British Baking Show? And what do you think? And would oh, you, why it. not start an American one? It. It's, it's a camp show to me. <laughs> it's oh, sort of campy. Oh, mm -hmm. see, I just, oh, I, so this is the first, the first series that I'm watching in real time. And I'm not loving it as much because you can't binge. It's like right. You know, I've, I've only binged. I, I've only binged it. Oh no, no no no! I don't no, know I'm how not, to watch it in real time. Oh, I'm watching the current one. So I saw we watched last night, 
And now I have to wait a whole oh, week to see oh. what happens. Does everybody out there love it? I, I we we it. binge it too. Stuff yeah, we yeah. definitely yeah, we definitely yeah. watch a whole season at once. Yeah, uh, Victoria Sponge and things that we that are parallels of the British, but not for us. But yeah. also, I'm just I'm in awe of what these bakers do. True, yeah. they are so talented, and they're so I mean under such pressure. Um, they do beautiful things, and I love the spirit of the show. I love, um, I won't give anything away if you didn't see mm -hmm. last night's uh, <laughs> episode, but someone was having a real problem. She tried something, it was the third time, and it looked like she was going to fail. Oh. And she looked over at another contestant and said, you know how to do this. And the mm -hmm. other baker came and helped her it's much less Dude. harsh than the American competition, it's, which it's is lovely. which is yeah, I agree. Yeah, and the families at the end. Oh, that's I just, so charming. It's, under it's, the tent. I was talking to a television producer about competition shows, and he said to me that the Great British um, Baking Show is the gold standard. Oh, okay. Very nice. We have we have a bunch of people in the chat who are uh, very intrigued, very happy, very pleased and very excited about the meringues um, uh, with one saying, I've never made a meringue and can't Whoa. wait to try it once she gets the book for her birthday and wants to know how quickly it can be December 3rd for her birthday. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so when you, when you get the book and you're going to make meringue, um, so there's, there's a very simple meringue, I call them snappers, but there are two recipes that are so simple and I think spectacular that I hope you'll make. One is called the Little Marbles and you make meringue and there's there's pastry shops. I think one actually just opened in New York now called Les Marais de, de Fred, Fred. <laughs> right? And all, all he sells are these little marbles. And so you make meringue and it can be all higgledy piggledy. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but you make the you know, higgledy piggledy ones for the parfait. These, it's nice if you make yeah, just a little round. Them. And so it's a little round and then it's whipped cream and a little round and whipped cream. And then you roll it in cookie crumbs or in chocolate. And I like to spread the meringue with either um, Biscoff cookies mm. spread, or even peanut butter or chocolate to give it another flavor. These are so simple and so much fun. And then this is so gorgeous. And if I didn't have this cookie, and no, I still might do it for New Year's Eve. Um, it's a very old fashioned vacheron. So it's meringue. And this is the one that can be piddledy piddledy because you just break up pieces of it. And you make a parfait, which is like an unchurned ice cream. And then it stays in the freezer till you need it. So it's, you can make it ahead. That's yeah. right. It stays in the freezer until you need it. So it's like it's like a party waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. Let me know when you when any of you out there in in in, in my neighborhood land, mm -hmm. um, if you make something and you have you know either Facebook or Instagram. Tag me so that I can see what you made. I would love that. I'm just at Gloria Greenspan everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I checked everybody beforehand while we were chatting uh, before the program started. Dory will not criticize what you show her you've made. <laughs> she, she is only uh, there to encourage you to continue. Um, we have a, a number of comments, uh, so there's definitely going to be a run on ruby chocolate in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> so uh, your purveyors will be very happy that you've mentioned that. And do you have a, a is there a brand that you prefer? It's only one company. It's called oh, just one. Harry Calibo. They're the only people to make it. And it's not okay. colored. That's the real color. That is what it is. I wish I had some up here. I, I know. I, didn't, yeah. I have a whole bag of um, Someone told me, and I haven't checked it, so I don't know, that you can get it at Trader Joe's. Probably. They were the first people to sell it as chips. Were they? But it didn't have the brand. Okay. And they have a relationship. Yeah, yeah I bet you'll okay. find it there. Good. Good, Good to know. Good to know. 
Um, I, I have to commend Allison who commented that she watches the Great British Baking Show while she's using the elliptical. So that brings me to another question. <laughs> uh, 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 honestly, uh, and you've been so genuine and um, generous with your information. I, I cannot understand as as Priscilla mentioned, is the problem with all this baking of these delicious things is that you have to eat them then. Mm -hmm. uh, how do no. you manage? How do you manage? No, She's got the no. answer. I have the answer. It's called bake and release. So because I think that I know that baking is made to be shared, that we bake in batches, right? It's very rare that we bake just one thing just for ourselves. We bake for others. And, you know, it was hard during the pandemic because it was hard to share. Um, but but I think now we, we can and should and must. So, mm -hmm. yeah, baking, bake it, bake and release. Um, I, well, as when I'm testing, I have so much stuff. And so I'll take a slice of something because I need, well, usually two, because I need to taste it. And then I need to see how long it will keep. Can it be mm -hmm. frozen or, you know, if it stays at room temperature, or how long will it be right. good for? Um, and then I ask people if they don't mind getting a piece of something rather than a whole. No one has ever refused. <laughs> I can just, imagine. Just saying. So we have some very specific questions uh, uh, on technical skills. So uh, a viewer asked, can I just substitute chocolate sauce for peanut butter in fluff filling for ice cream cake? The, this ice cream oh, cake? the ice cream cake, the, okay, s'mores, the okay. s'mores cake. It's good, um, I've eaten it. <laughs> yes, you have. I made it for the first time when you were here. Um, 142. I, so that's an interesting, uh, it's it's marshmallow fluff, something I don't often use, but was perfect um, for this when mixed with peanut butter. You could just skip that and use the chocolate sauce. Or, wait, what, 142? Here it is. Thank you. So, so, so yeah, so you it's lighten the, the filling. You lighten the peanut butter. Like with the fluff, it would taste kind of and, like the filling of a candy. Right. Yeah. yeah. So with peanut butter and, and, and some milk, if you the the fudge sauce um, will. What did you think it would just say? But I think you want you want to make. No, I was going to say the author was wrong. <laughs> What what the author was thinking was wrong. Yes, use more use more fudge sauce. Oh, thank goodness the author got it right. Yeah, <laughs> sauce would be fun. And another, which is your favorite cake that includes almond paste? Paste, paste. You, yes, almond paste. You don't have almond paste in here, do you? I did. I I did do a cake. I don't know if it made it in here. Um, you're the almond paste woman. That I they didn't ask no. me the question, so okay. no, there isn't. So there was wait, where is did I not include it? I feel like you've got one in one of the recent books, though. No, oh, good, that means I haven't. It never, thank you for asking. I had a fabulous cake that came from the TVA region and it was made with almond paste and it was very low and yeah. so, but I don't have no, it. No, I right? just I saw the frangy con, so I was looking. No, oh nope. goody. Okay. <laughs> so I will I, I will find that recipe and put it on my um in my my newsletter. Um I don't I don't bake with almond paste all that much. Take yeah. it for some. Yeah, I like almond paste. I know a lot. you do. It's hard to find a good one. I have a prejudice because I used to run an almond paste company, but there are these classic cakes made with almond paste and you beat eggs in and fold maybe um, just a little flour and lots of citrus rind. Those are just delicious. So I have, there is one in Paris Sweets. Um, there's a pastry shop in Paris, Arnaud Lerrière, and his, he, he started, his first shop was in Montmartre, and he made a pavé Montmartre 
Mm. And it was a square cake and it was made with almond paste. So it was uh, a dense, but delightfully dense cake in a square that he then covered in rolled out almond paste like most oh, of him. Oh, wow. So it's yeah. really. <laughs> and then made a little, a little a bow decoration. Mm -hmm. So it looked like you were receiving so a almost box, like a, the, uh, like a pizza door. Yeah. Where they, but, yeah. But as a, a as a larger yeah. square. And then um, um, I make those rainbow cookies too. The Italian rainbow cookies are made with almond paste. Do you like never made those? Oh, it's, they're fun. It's on my list too. When my, I have an oven problem, none of these people need But to can know, people but. find on your website? Can they find I recipes with almond yeah, paste? I think there's a few. Yeah. Under okay. my name. Yeah. Good. Uh, and another, have you a curd or pastry cream utilizing passion fruit puree? I haven't, but just fold it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's delicious. Mm. Passion fruit puree, boivin. I just, I they just saw it at Fromage. fromage. Right. I just saw it today at Fromage. Right. So you can buy it. Oh, excellent. At Fromage down in Old Saybrook. Yes. Um, Wonderful. And I, I, there's uh, lots of questions in here, so I'm trying to go through them. Well, you Very find, cool. I'm just going to munch a little bit of cooking. Oh, yes, please, please do. So I did it here. The, so. the recipe is you're, uh, you're to chop, you know, uh, good chocolate, but I was lazy and I had large chocolate chips mm. here at Delhi. So, so good. Mm. Isn't it delicious? But I, I already, and you toast the walnuts in these cookies beforehand, which is a great way to bring out the flavor. So you get a just a rich and the whole other texture. Mm. I'm sorry, I just couldn't resist. It's good. That's what it's there for. Extra. Yeah, you're making us all uh, very yeah, hungry. I'm <laughs> um, a good girl. <laughs> Karen says she just made City's Naval Orange Pork Tenderloin from the Around My French Table Cookbook, and oh. it was delicious. Oh, great! So, oh, thank yeah. you, thank you. What's what's bubbling away on my stovetop? is um, also from around my French table. It's um, called my go-to dough and it's bourbon. Yeah, it's beef dough. Bob. Yes. We have friends coming to spend the night next Saturday and I'm going to be away for two days. So Wednesday is some kind of a stew day that I can freeze. So I know that's um, uh, it's just the right season for it too. Yeah. Uh, Gretchen asks, if I were to add one cookie to my holiday assortment this year, what do you recommend from Baking with Dory? World Peace Cookies yes. version 2.0. So some, some of you out there may know the World Peace Cookie. It's been around for a really long time. And it's a perfect <laughs> cookie. It was, I got the original recipe from Pierre Hermé, the Paris pastry chef and I saw people would write to me and then I would saw on Instagram and Facebook that people were changing the cookie. Some people were adding peanut butter to it or mint flavoring. And I've often been asked if I would change it and I always said no. It was just a perfect cookie. And then my friend Charlotte Druckmann was writing a book called Women on Food. And she asked if I would make a world peace cookie for women. And I said, no. I said, I'll make another cookie, but this one's perfect, not changing it. The idea kept just like playing in my head. And I did something I'd, I'd never done before. I tried to think of ingredients that would match characteristics that I admire in women. And I, and they had to be delicious in the cookie. So I ended up making a version 2.0. I added rye flour for earthiness, for being grounded, cocoa nibs for strength, because that's a bold flavor, um, chili powder, pinot d'espelette, um, for just a sense of unpredictability, mm. because you know you put the you put the chili powder in and you don't get it in every bite; it just pops up here and there. So, and I love that. And freeze dried raspberries for sass, for verve, mm. for that kind of excitement 
and and I thought, okay, intellectually, that was a good idea. But it turns out it made a really great cookie. And um, I mean, I never would have changed the cookie if it weren't great. So yes, that's a good cookie to add to this year's cookie box. And world peace. We need it. Yep. We're good. Yeah. Definitely. So we have another question about, um, uh, do you have recommendations or a suggestion for how somebody might modify your recipes if they have a sodium restricted diet? Oh, if, does this, is it possible to just take the soda, is, does baking soda have sodium in so Yeah, so yeah. that I think with the chemical idea. leavening, you, that's chemical leavening, which is baking soda, soda. baking powder, or sodium. So that's number one. Those recipes would be would ruin the recipe. Right, because there's no yeah. substitute for, for that. In a recipe that calls for salt, you can take the salt yeah, out. So soda. yeah, there's baking soda in the, that's the first time someone has asked me. Yeah, and then I'm not going to mess with your recipe. You might be able to take the baking soda out of the world piece. It's a very small. I amount. think it could. I think yeah. it could because when we, um, I took the leavening when I, I had a baking company with our son, and we baked everything in rings, and we couldn't use the leavening. Oh, interesting. Because it would become kind of crazy. Yeah, huh. and so we took the leavening out of a lot of cookies, and we were just fine. I wish I could be more helpful. No, sorry. Well, I will say um, I, I've been a, a big fan of your cookbooks. And my question would be is, I, I'm, uh, I said before we started the program that I have read a lot of cookbooks in my day, not only as a librarian, but cooking at home. And there is nobody that I have seen who has been as generous as Dory in her writing with the playing around suggestions, the variety of adapting or uh, changing a, a recipe up in a way that might suit you better than, than the original recipe would. I, I mean, chefs don't normally <laughs> allow you to take that on yourself and, and make some of those changes. Um, and, and the same can be said in her newsletter where I guarantee you that if you uh, subscribe to her newsletter, you will find twice a week that there will be information in there that you never would have anticipated, <laughs> but it would be something, something you'll remember for the rest of your life, some recommendations, some advice, and you just never know what, what treasure nugget is going to be in there. Uh, this week's most recent was about how to photograph food from her from her book photographer, um, and, and it's excellent advice. So. Thank you. I mean, it's not a question; it's a statement. Thank you. But but how did you develop that that generosity of the playing around aspects to the to the recipes? So you're so lovely. Thank you. And <laughs> no, 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 no. It is such a. It's it's an it's interesting to call it generous because I thought it was very selfish actually mm -hmm. when I started because. Remember I said I'm kind of a what if person, well, maybe I didn't, but I am. So I'm always like changing things. I'm thinking, what if, what if I added this? What if I added that? And so playing around started because I couldn't bear <laughs> to just make one thing. I kept thinking, mm. oh, but what if I added cardamom? What if, and so playing around and, and I've had it since that little postscript to the recipe since my first book um, is really, it was a way for me to just get out more ideas that I thought were good. But I like to think that it also encourages people to play with the recipes and to find a way to make something that, that you'll really love using the flavors that you, you can't change everything in a recipe. And no, technically. Yeah. But I have to say, I always feel that you're, you've already thought of something that I'm just thinking. And when I turn my head on the page, <laughs> that's what you're telling us. Oh, by the way. Um, but it's, um, I love being able to do that. And I love hearing from 
bakers who say, you know, I, today, um, a baker, um, Marty in Toronto, there are just two of them in the house. And so she, it's her turn. She minifies everything. Yeah. She just makes everything. So she once took an entire ice cream cake and made two ice cream pops out of it. Mm -hmm. right, so she really minifies. But today she made the apple pan dowdy and she made it just in a little bowl for, mm -hmm. for two. Uh -huh, um, and I just, I love when people take my recipes and make them work for, mm -hmm. for themselves. And just, and if you would, would you put the address to sign up for my newsletter in the chat? I did. It's storyfriend.bulletin.com. That's it. Great. It's, Thank it's you. It's there for, yeah, it's there for everybody. Great. Um, well, another question, uh, very specific about what scoop numbers do you use for mm -hmm. normal size cookies and the large bakery style cookies? Oh, I don't, so I don't have, I have, so Annie, we're very nice when you called me a chef, but I'm really a home baker. I'm well, a not one a ounce, chef. I mean, I'll just have one so, ounce scoop, but I don't know what the number is. So it's I, tiny. So I use, that's two tablespoons, the one ounce scoop. So I use OXO um, scoops and they come in like t-shirts, small, medium, and large. large. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So I think the the medium is a two tablespoon scoop. I would think that a, I would think I used to have a, it written on my scoop. I think a one I tablespoon is super tiny and a two tablespoon is pretty tiny. Oh, no, maybe you're right. Maybe you're I, right. Excuse me. Yeah. You're, you're, oh, I'm, in the, I'm, in the, the, I'm in scoop land. Excuse right. me. <laughs> Oh, there we go. So, oh, look, there we go. Right. I used to have them, Michael, etched them. So, yeah, you so, can't tell. That's this, is, this is probably, this is a number 70. That's probably oh, two. Yeah, but I didn't use that one. Oh, okay. That. Okay. This oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. But they're the same. They are the same? Okay. So, it's like, I think it's, so I you, have it in my book somewhere. This is two teaspoons. Number 60 is two teaspoons. So that's, so that's one, like a little more than one tablespoon. And that's, that's what that's I used use. to make the baby bougere. I used to use the medium size, two tablespoons. Um, and then I decided I liked them when they were just like popping in your mouth size. So this is part of my scoop wardrobe, small, medium, insane. large. Mm -hmm. so, I'm sorry. So small is two teaspoons, teaspoon, number 60. Got it. Okay. And uh, one other patron attendee audience member said, uh, as, as I was making comments about your uh, generosity in your writing, um, she said, yes. And she writes as if she were in your kitchen teaching. And I would like to add to that, that I think, Dory, you've probably made um, many, many more people feel like you are their imaginary best friend. <laughs> you are BFFs with many more people than you can imagine because of the way you write and the uh -huh. way you engage uh, with yeah. all the energy that you put into what you do. It's just an mm -hmm. astounding it's accomplishment. Just, thank you. Yeah. There's, so, no, there's nothing nicer that you can that, that you'd be able to say to me. Nothing that would make me feel better, but I have, I have something to confess. If I sound like I'm in the kitchen with you, you should know that I imagine someone, and it could be you, in my kitchen with me. So when I'm writing, I'm trying to imagine that I have a companion home baker with me. And I sometimes Michael will walk by, I'm sitting mm -hmm. at the computer, and I'm going like this, like trying mm -hmm. to like, feel the texture of something in my head and try to write it. So um, the fact that, that you're out there helps me write what I do. So thank you. Well, thank you very much for all of that. Um, and I think if we've come to the end of the Q&A, uh, I cannot thank both Dory and Priscilla enough for an hour of Welcome. just <laughs> utter yeah. enjoyment um, and we didn't even have to eat any of those delicious goodies in front of you to enjoy it tremendously. 
Okay, well, next time, next time. I think, <laughs> yeah, I hope we can, we can be together and we can all taste together. Oh, absolutely. We, it's a promise. It's definitely a promise. Thank awesome. you all for joining us Thank today. You. Thank, Thank you so you much, Dori and Priscilla, very, very much. I hope everybody enjoys their weekend and I hope I see you soon at an Essex Library program. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye -bye. Thank you.